Welcome to the Lantern Light Podcast. Lantern Light is an artist collective, publication, and promotional platform focused on shedding light on the talented artists of our hometown of New Orleans, Louisiana, and beyond. Follow us at lanternlightinc.com for updates on future podcasts, live recording sessions, and more. I'm your host, Kyle Erosh, and today we have experimental rock band Static Masks in the studio to talk about their brand new record, Permanent Vacation. We talk a little bit about the production and ideas behind the record, the history of the band, and more. Stay tuned until the very end where you can hear a brand new song from the record. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, so I have Static Masks in the studio today. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for having us. Mm-hmm. So it's been about two years since your last re- full release. It's a sophomore release for yeah, this band. a little over two years. Cool. So in that time, I guess, what has been the inspiration <clears throat> for this record? And what's influenced you guys as a band maybe coming out from Late Bloomers was the last record is what it was called? Correct. Cool. So, um, yeah, I guess just you can speak on that a little bit and the inspiration and everything that went behind this record. Well, I think the, the the main goal is to always progress as a band and try to make a better record than your first one. So that was pretty much the goal we had, I think. You know, and things just take time a little bit. So we wrote it for a year and then uh, recorded it about almost a year now, last summer. Yeah, about exactly. Yeah, and then now here we are. just takes a little time, but just want to make a better record. Cool. Yeah, I think it sounds great. You guys went to uh, James and Hightower? Yep. And- he, has he done everything for you guys? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He did the first record, and he did this one. The first record, though, was at his old room, and this one was in his brand new room that he had, um, which I think is part of why the record, the second record sounds as good as it does is because he was able to hone in on a lot of the sounds, um, especially for like different sorts of tones on guitar and a better drum sound for sure. Yeah, I think the drums sound incredible um, from the, the three singles that are out now. Uh, I think they're all great. Um, you guys were also great live. We had a uh, play together at Gasa. Yeah. When was um, that? Was that a couple months ago? Yeah, two months ago. St- with standards. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Cool. Yeah. So that was that was great. Um, so yeah, I was doing a little bit of research on you guys and what I think like you guys had put out your first releases in like thirteen. Uh, technically, I used uh, I, I I was it was like part of a solo project. I was trying to like just start something new and i use the name static masks for that release i think i released that like new year's eve 2013 I'm just trying to get a new project going and then it kind of sat on it for another two years so how did the band form how did all you guys get together like w- so obviously it was more of like your own brainchild at first and then grew into what it, it is now yeah we we all know each other from playing in new orleans like for a while like I don't know when we started this stuff. Like, me and me and Pat were in a band together uh, called Meadow Flow in like two thousand and seven. Seven is when we started playing together. We did that for like a f- couple, two, three years. Mm-hmm. Um, and Rob was in every band. Still is. Uh, <laughs> and we just knew him from around and being in cool bands. Neckbeard and Rabbit mm-hmm. are the ones I remember you being in the, when I first met you. And Ben was in a band called Auto Tell Me for a super long time, um, right? Yeah, probably, geez, six or seven, no, eight or nine years, probably. Yeah, and we and yeah, we just all been buds since forever. And Pat uh, moved to San Francisco for a while, and when he came back, he hit me up and was like, "Let's start a band. We can call it Static Masks. I already have a name." Uh, and I was like, cool, we should get these two dudes, and then, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I was planning on moving back to New Orleans. This was 2015, I believe. And so I recorded a little EP called 90 Smell by myself, and kind of like I knew I was going to come back. I knew Eric and I were going to start a band. It was kind of just jump-starting the process. And then he, when I got back a few months later, he rec- recruited these guys, and then we went. You know, full force ever since. So you guys had released the material before... You had released the material under Static Mask before it was a full band? Yeah. Cool. And then when you guys got together, you had performed the 90 Smell songs as a band? Just one song. Just one song. Yeah, yeah. And then did, we just started writing new ones. Cool. Did at, For that song that you put out, did um did you like perform like all the instruments on that yourself? or? Yeah. 
Yeah, cool. and, except for the drums. It was all like electronic drums. Mm-hmm. Cool deal. So then, and then after that, you guys hit with that 2017 release. Yeah. So like, yeah, we started, I guess, almost exactly four years ago. This is 2019 now. So yeah, July 2015, I moved back. Eric and I just started like, like, like right away. I think Rob was on board right before I moved back, correct? And yeah, because we had, we had tried to make another sort of Pat solo project work before he had moved to San Francisco. So we were already, I was already familiar with Pat's music. But, I mean, going back to what they were talking about or what Eric was talking about, I mean, we already knew what all of us were doing in other bands, and so we knew kind of what the vibe was going to be, kind of even before we really started working together. Um, that's probably the biggest difference between the second record that we were about to put out and the first record was that... Uh, the songs were sort of like constructed sort of without, I mean, they, I think Eric and Pat knew that me and Ben were going to be on, on the record, but didn't necessarily know how we would approach the music. And so with the second record, it's kind of the four of us writing together in kind of a more, a more dominant way. Um, so I think, I feel like the songs feel a little bit more natural in that way. And the parts are sort of, they work together in a much more cohesive uh, light. Cool deal. Yeah. One of the questions I was going to ask is, what do you feel like is different about this record as opposed to the last record? Well, I think in the first record, we were still pretty much writing right when we were recording the record. So, like, there's a song on there, like, we finished, like, right right before we started. We never played it live. It's kind of, like, gone in the ether, you know? And so this one was really prepared for, like, a, a good year, just writing it all together. Before you had gone to the studio. Yeah, yeah. And then... So you guys have been sitting on, have you guys had the masters and everything finished for a long time? No. Um, we had to come up with money to pay for the recording. <laughs> so we, yeah. <laughs> so we, we played we, a lot of shows. <laughs> yeah, so we had to wait a little bit on that. And yeah. then we took a little break, just a three-month vacation just from playing music, just kind of good mentally, you know. And so we got the masters. I, we finished the record in August, got the masters in, like, March. So, like, as soon as New Year's hit, we kind of got the band back going, you know, got ready for the album. Cool deal. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I'd be remiss to not mention this, but, uh, so Pat, you and, you and is it Rob, you guys run strange Daisy records together. Correct. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I just have to commend you on the packaging and everything. It's not, it's very rare for a local band to have such professional <laughs> packaging and, design work um the vinyl looks sick you just brought Thanks, me one man. thank you so much it's yeah. super sick everyone go to static mass band camp i guess is that where people would be funneled to online to to order a vinyl from yeah static mask on Bandcamp or strange daisy.com on strange yeah, yeah. The, the different variants are super sick what's what press do you partner with to, to press your stuff with it was pressed at new orleans record press i'm wearing the t-shirt yeah. <laughs> Shout out New Orleans Record Rob press. and I do some work there too. So yeah. we press records. And so we actually, actually got to press these ourselves. And then Ben and Air came in for a day and helped out. You guys are uh, embedded in the music scene <laughs> and the industry here in New Orleans. No, it's awesome. Well, we're really proud of the record because I feel like we made all the components of it. We did everything for it, designed it, put it together, made the vinyl, pressed the vinyl, made the music. <laughs> like everything about the record, when people hold it in their hands, we constructed pretty much 100% of it ourselves without anyone anyone's help, really. And the quality is on, on every part is amazing. You know, that's why I had to comment on the, the packaging. And I guess the only thing that you didn't do yourself was the engineering and the producing which is a smart move because it sounds great and it would be a little bit of a bummer if it was super diy and <laughs> right, was yeah. uh not you know the best representation it could be which happens a lot with bands yeah you know for sure. and obviously i i record so i have like a biased opinion on why it doesn't everybody just come record with me or somebody who's good you know but um production's great everything's great um so pat do you Rob, do you also do graphic design? I do a little bit. Pat does the majority of it for the Strange Daisy label. Uh, a lot of it's sort of his sort of aesthetic, and um, I contribute in, in small ways here and there. But um, a lot of it was sort of an outlet for him to do design work. I mean, I'm kind of speaking for him no, right now. No, but, yeah. but, yeah, um, I dabble in it a little bit just because I used to do a lot of it for my old bands back in the day and stuff like that. So I, I help out here and there, and I, I like to do whatever I can. And he'll bounce the ideas off of me and stuff like that. For but sure. most of it's each of us pushing each other in directions and just, you know, 
having positive reinforcement behind stuff. It's kind of hard to put yourself out there visually and aesthetically, so it's good to have someone to uh, bounce ideas off of. Absolutely, yeah. Did you guys also do like all the the animated videos for the streaming? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Did that? Yeah. Yeah. It's all that's sick. All, that's the pretty much all Pat. <laughs> all yeah. Patrick. All Pat. Pat. The Pat experience. No, it's great, man. Um, super sick. I think just the the whole the band as a whole just seems like it's I don't know very well put together. Really appreciate Thank that. Thanks, man. Thank you, man. I think you guys have a lot of good stuff going on with this record and this release. Um, Thanks. You guys have like a good body of work now. I feel like. Yeah. We're yeah, I think we're we're moving forward in the right ways. I mean, the first record, you know, I feel like we were experimenting with a lot of sort of you know technical muscle flexing. You know, flexing a lot of those like sort of ha- like how how much we could augment the idea of like a pop song essentially and like weird time signatures or just weird tones and that kind of thing. Uh, this second record is definitely heavier. We experiment with a lot more sort of distortion and just like trying to make our song, our songs a little heavier, but still delicate and within a pop mentality. Um, I think, I think Pat and Eric sort of like, I, I play really hard with on, on, on the kit. And I think like that, like bringing that energy and bringing that, I think changed how they approached songwriting for Static Masks. Right. For sure. Cool. Yeah. And I mean, like the, I like how you guys describe it. I mean, it is like catchy hooks and like Eric, your vocals are sick. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Can't, I don't know if you guys can comment on this, but like, do you know, because I mean, obviously this is a thing on the production side of things that James handled or mm-hmm. whatever the team did over there at Hightower. Um, but when I was listening to uh, the, uh, the freshman release and compared to this one, one thing that did strike me a lot about the production was the just the vocal layering and effects were on point on this new one. I think I think some of that had to do, uh, especially I mean, on my end on the songs that I sing, um, I just like got better at singing. I guess I mean, or just more confident. Like I remember the first time I like. After I was done recording, I was like, "Man, I, I didn't like actually really sing any of those parts. I just kind of like made sure it was in key and like played it as safe as possible." And this time too, I t- I think I just took like eight hundred more takes. Honestly, like I like I was just be like, "No, no, James, no," and like just keep doing it over and over again until I was like, "All right, cool." So like, yeah, I mean, a lot of it was just taking more time to do it. I think than the first time, you know, for sure. Um, and I guess too, some of it would was the studio, like just the room sounds better that that they're in too, mm-hmm. you know. And just just doing it more often. Yeah, and we, and we also had like Nick there the whole time, and I'm in a band with Nick, is a different band with Nick, and uh, and having him and Pat and everybody kind of be like, no, that sucked, you know, like mm-hmm. they were nicer about it. Was, <laughs> was but that, that that was helpful for me to like be like, all right, no, that's not good enough. Keep going. So. Oh, yeah. yeah, especially when you do a bunch of takes, it's good to get an outside ear. Yeah, yeah, Definitely yeah. Helps. You know, so it, it was. I, I think just recording this record was was super fun because like it was the third time I've recorded with James. I think Rob's recorded with him more than twice too, and you know the second time for all of us. And James is super fun, and then Nick being there, we're all buds with him too. It was just like a good. I don't know, and plus we had it two extra days, which was nice mm-hmm. from the first you record. Know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, did the first one what, like five days? Yeah, how long five did you guys days. track for? Eight this days. Eight days. Yeah. Well, no, I think we ended up doing seven, and then we had like a master day, but we were planning on doing eight, but we we got it done in seven. How many songs? It's eight. Eight. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I that's mean, good work. I I I chalk up our sound. Half of it, I think, is 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 Nick and James being able to capture what we were trying to do. It's funny because you know, like our, we write all these songs, and they're essentially like a play, plays that we would put in a game. But then when, when you get in the studio, it's like you have these two new coaches that are like, "All right, no, you gotta like try it this way, try it again, do this, do that." I mean, they, they we were pretty prepared, so it wasn't a lot of that kind of thing. But I feel like they were very they were very adamant on making sure that our record sounded as good as we wanted it to sound. So did they do much like, I guess producing on that end of things not in, not in the sense of I think, writing i think more just like tone wise and like like sounds yeah, yeah like the this time around was the, the as opposed to the first one there was a lot of like me and pappy and like all right like we really like our pedal boards you know for like as an example but if you guys think you have something that'll sound better than we're using and there was a bunch of like nick being like hey what have you do that or james being like oh you should try that and then all of a sudden it's like yeah that sounds you know that sounds great like better than it would have if I just would have went with what I 
do live, I guess. Right. And I think the first time me and Pat were like, yeah, we're just going to do it. You know, like we want our sound to sound like what it is live. And I think that there's something to be said for like doing different things just because something can sound really great when it's super loud inside of like, you know, a small venue. Uh, but when you go to record it, it doesn't have the, you know what I mean? You, you need to add something to it to give it that same feeling. And I think we, we did a lot of that um, with with everything, with bass, guitars. I mean, we, we played around with amps and stuff. So it was, it, it was nice, man. We, we got to do, uh, we, we got to really like focus on the tone of it, I think way more than we did on the first record. They we really just knew that we should do that. They know it works. They know what works like in their dojo. And I yeah. feel like us like kind of relinquishing some of that trust was like a huge part of it too. And I mean, I trust those dudes like it, effortlessly. Yeah. It's yeah. also helpful that they know our bands, you know, like us as people and they've seen us play like enough times to know like what we probably what we want to do. Yeah, I went in, my bass wasn't even working at the moment. I just grabbed one of his, let him, <laughs> trusted them to plug in yeah. the pedals and play the tunes, and it worked out fine. Yeah, they tight. took care of it. Yeah. yeah, I think that's something huge to be said, like that you have a relationship with your, you know, quote-unquote producer, engineer, whatever. Yeah, you totally. know, And like he knows what you're going for. Um, so uh, did you guys, random nerdy, question did you use the jazz chorus for main guitar tone yep cool and, and i think we hooked up a fender with it we with the, the whole me and pat used the same i'm sorry me and pat used the same uh uh amp setup which was, i thought was cool um but yeah we we used your jc77 i think and we all and we had it going with uh was it the champ it was like a, it was like a, a fin a fender tube um head uh, and we just kind of mixed those tones. I th I think when when he did it, there was like a lot more of the JC than the than the tube amp. But just having that like tube amp with it, like mm -hmm. I really thought added a bunch to the you know the sound of the guitars and stuff. I think it was the basement Fender basement. I don't yeah. I don't think it was the basement. I, th I think it was he's like the, the other one. Yeah, I think it was the champ. Because he's got three in there. Huh? Yeah, he's yeah. got a bunch of them. I th I think we we plugged them all in, and that was mm -hmm. the one that we were like, yeah, that sounds really great mixed with this, you know. Yeah, but we're big fans of the jazz core, so yeah, we we, we gotta have that in it. <laughs> but it was like, I mean, and I think that's like the driving tone, like that amp. If you're just thinking about part. volumes, was yeah, it was turned up a lot louder than the other just one. But, blended a little bit, but of yeah, it. just having that like two blended in with it, just especially with, like the distortion parts and stuff like that. I think it really helped out a lot. Yeah, I will say like at the the show that we played together, um, yeah, those JCs were killing it. <laughs> <laughs> the pedal boards yeah, sounded I'm, great. I'm, I'm, yeah, you guys like you know you, you're you're a band. Obviously, you guys like know your sound and you're invested into it. So when you bring it to somebody like James, you know he's just got to take what you're doing and make it sound as good as it can. Yeah, yeah. you know, so cool. And Rob, do you? Hmm. I'm probably wrong. Do you? You don't play an acrylic kit, do you? I don't. I play a, a D drum kit, which I mean, is that what you use on the record? That's what I use on the record. It's, I've had it for years, and it's like a special D drum because what it is is it's the test kits that. Um, D drum sent out before they got bought out. I don't know what company bought them out, but D drum like they they made their first acoustic kits in 2006, 2007, something mm -hmm. like that. And um, there's a local drum shop here called Ray Franzen's, and Hell I just, yeah. I went in Shout there. Out. I, I went in there one day, and uh, essentially, you know, they just they had this they had this D drum kit there, and I never heard anything about a D drum, uh, but I played it, and I really liked the sound. I liked all the layers of everything. Um, uh, and the density of the drums, but basically the, the w w once the once the kit got bought out or once the company got bought out, uh, the quality of the drums like went down significantly because they, they 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 changed the ply on the on the mass produced uh, kits to make to make to make better hardware essentially. Um, so like my my D drum is like one of like a very small run that they had sent to drum shops to try to sell uh, just to like promote the fact that D drum was making acoustic kits. Very cool, um, yeah. So. And shout out at those guys. They went on to do Crush. Okay. After those guys, I had like incept, like did the Inception for D drum, mm -hmm. and then like after I had the Dominion kit, and right. so like uh, it 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 it's an awesome drum set. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, after they had did that and the the quality kind of tanked, they had uh, a lot. Some of the guys who had started D drum went on to make Crush. Okay. And I think at the show that we played, we both used that backline kit. I think Maybe so. and it was that was an acrylic crush. That's yeah. why I had asked you that question, but gotcha. I remember it was Guns of the Seneca set. Which shout out Guns of the Seneca, they're sick. Um, <laughs> yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah, that show was that show was fun. That it was, was a, a fun, fun show. That was like our I think our first show this year. 
wasn't it? Yeah, it was our first show after taking a break. It took like four months, three months off. It was well, yeah, we played like three shows really, like real quick. Mm-hmm. It was a little tour of the city. Have you guys done any tours as a band? It's just just a Texas run. Yeah. Like we did that um, sometime uh, like November or September. I don't know. Yeah, I can't, well, I can't last really fall. remember. Last fall. Yeah. Right after we uh, made the record. Yeah. Yeah. So have you, have you, did you guys like play around a lot on the freshman release or? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. We kind of, I don't know. It's, it's, I think putting out the record was a little bit more important than playing shows. I think all of it, I think, I think Pat had a slew of songs and, and, and he wanted, and, you know, being a band, I think was really important to him and Eric. And it was important to me too, to be in another band that was more of a style of music that I'm into. Um, and, uh, I, I think that was the priority of just writing really good songs at first. And then once we started playing shows, I mean, we all enjoyed it. We all enjoyed being in a band together. So we just kind of started pushing it forward. Hell yeah. Cool. Um, Okay, this might be a, a cringy question, but mm. what uh, what this this last year leading up into this record, what are some bands that you guys were listening to that I mean maybe didn't influence the music directly, but mm-hmm. that spoke to you guys? Good question. Locally, not locally. Uh, both. Either. Hmm. I mean, I think all four of us listen to I think different things, kind of. Uh, but I mean, I think. I think a lot of bands that we all liked were starting to form again, like do reunions and stuff like that. And like seeing how they elevated their own sound and seeing how they elevated themselves, I think influ- like at least it influenced just my perception of music that, you know, was from an, another time coming back. You know, I think like right now within rock, the rock genre, there's a lot of like, you know, um, uh, bands re- you know, reuniting and that kind of thing. Like we all like a band called Hum, uh, uh, American football came back. Oh, you know, yeah. Like, there are all these things kind of happening. We just played with the Appleseed cast, which was a band, you know, from like the early 2000s, you know, and I feel like a lot of, a lot of that sort of re editing your sound, re editing a kind of like aesthetic, you know, that maybe wasn't a 90s thing or an early 2000s thing, but sort of trying to put it on a plate that's a little bit more modern and a little bit more subtle. I think, at least for me, was something that I was thinking about when we were making the second record of trying to, you know, reserve something but with a fresh taste and a fresh idea behind it. Hell yeah. I mean, I think uh, maybe not just speaking to stylistically, but um, just in the same way that the early 2000s was such a huge push for art and music, um, you know, with that, the drive-in and all those bands like that, um, I think we're seeing another expansion in art with music in general. So I definitely understand what you mean with that. I mean, obviously those bands are coming back, but in general, I just feel like there's a lot more going on in the last year or two than there was going on between like, you know, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I mean, rock music right now is in a strange like circle in the sense of like indie rock, indie rock bands that were trying to record themselves you know, in the early 2000s don't sound like bands that record themselves now. Like, the quality that you can record yourself and, like, make a rock album, like, just by yourself in your house, like, you can make it sound absolutely amazing. And I feel like that is really changing the game in terms of, like, how rock music and just, like, being in a band, like, what the, what the idea of being in a band, like, can really be, essentially. Absolutely. It goes both ways, though. I mean, because then that also brings in the question of oversaturation, which, you know, obviously coming from a production engineer side on, on my end, you know, it's like it's great and it's ultimately a good thing because, like you said, it gives all these bands an opportunity to release some decent quality stuff on their own, which leads to more music, more art, and is generally a better thing to happen. But, you know. On my end, it's like, you know, especially when it's a band that would benefit from real production, you know, like I, if I hear a superior drummer, I can call it out. And like, I'm like, oh, that's the Avatar kid on Superior Drummer 2. And like, <laughs> it fucking kills it for me, you know. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think that it's good. And I think, you know, uh, with Strange Daisy and Static Mass and, and everything, especially in New Orleans, I think that the, the music scene is, you know, having a little resurgence. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. Um, all of us were a part of essentially an instrumental rock like 
phase of New Orleans music, and I think it's kind of cool to see that come back. I mean, you're, Jamels is instrumental, right? Mm-hmm. I was never in an instrumental band. You're, you weren't. Eric, Eric wasn't. But I blew you're it. You're friends with a bunch of them. I he blew was it. friends with, with a bunch of them. But I, I guess I just mean, like, it's interesting to see how, like, that kind of stuff comes back around. Music yeah. nerd shit. Yeah, for sure. It's also pretty interesting to see, like, how the scene was 10 years ago and how it is now. It's kind of it's kind of cool to be part of both. I don't know. It's kind of it's weird. It's definitely yeah. kind of weird, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was a big gap where... Like we had our run with, uh, with me and Autotomy, Pat and Smiley with a knife, and running sure. with a Living Soundtrack and all that, and then suddenly run, yeah. it, it was a great run. Smiley Beautiful. with a knife is sick. What happened to them? Yeah, you'd have to ask this boy. Oh, that's was the main. I moved away. Dude and Smiley with oh, a knife. Oh damn, yeah. y'all are sick, dude. I saw y'all at um, Spanish Moon in like 2010. Awesome, love that. Love I have, he was I have the guy tapping on the guitar yeah, the whole tapper, time. Tapper, tapper, oh, dude, you're. You were yeah. getting it, dude. He had, he had baggier <laughs> pants and longer hair, I Stage think. Stage left guitar. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Drummer was sick. <laughs> yeah, awesome. That drummer yeah. was that, sick. That, that band, Jared, man. That, that band was so fun. Fucking <laughs> right. I had, I had like, good. the CD and T-shirt. Nice. Yeah, the band yeah. was awesome. That's awesome. But, yeah, uh, so, I, you know, life kind of got in the way, and mm-hmm. I moved away. And that band kind of had to fizzle out. Yeah. Organically, I guess. And then, um, yeah, I think we all kind of took a break from music for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. think I think when we when, once we start like when we started the band, Rob was finishing up a big tour or about mm-hmm. to go on a big tour, and he was like not touring for a long time. Yeah, that was my swan song. Yeah, so maybe that's why we don't play a lot of stuff. But and honestly, know. yeah, Ben was also like, I don't know, man, yeah. for a while, and yeah. I was like, No, nah, you're gonna I do it. I needed a big break from. Yeah, I, I, took I was a like, year Yeah, off you're gonna take a break, but then you're gonna do it. Mm-hmm. And I, was like, I don't know. Finally, yeah, he convinced do it. <laughs> yeah. Finally got me. Yeah. Then we all you know started the band at the age thirty. Yeah, the best idea. The perfect ever. time to start a rock and roll <laughs> yeah. band. Yeah, yeah, good career move. Yeah, yeah, we're all really smart. Kyle, I know that I know that you're the interviewee or you're interviewing us, but I do have a question for you. Let's go. As someone, and I think a group of us with a pedigree with like instrumental music like uh, under our belt, I guess I'm 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 curious as to ask why, you know, the band that you're in right now is instrumental and like kind of where that comes from because like there were no instrumental rock bands around here like we were the only ones really I mean, we were yeah. like part of a bunch of them yeah yeah can i just say that rob is killing this job interview right now <laughs> yeah rob you're killing it. Turn it around, man. <laughs> yeah you okay yeah um well i mean you know ob- obviously you guys are a little bit older than me i mean i'm, I'm 27 quit so, bragging so yeah still I'm, I'm i'm gonna i'll have a baby face for the rest of my life though so i always like 12 but um, no, I mean, but obviously, like, Living Soundtrack and Smiley with Knife or whatever, like, I'm obviously into all that shit. So, I mean, I might, I might not have been around at that time, but, like, I'm just from the same vein. Um, yeah. And for me, you know, like, uh, before, I mean, I grew up playing, like, metal, like, weird prog shit, and, you know, I just got into just instrumentation a lot. And, I mean, I listen to everything now, you know, but... Uh, as far as like, you know, shambles is, it's two piece now. So my roommate and I, I mean, we just nerd the fuck out on some shit and that's like all it is. And I mean, I love music in p- period. So, you know, whether I'm listening to like the new Freddie Gibbs record with Mad Lib that came out or Jay Dilla so beats good. or oh, whatever, yeah. I'm gonna, I instrument, I mean, I feel like instrumental music is lost on some people who aren't music nerds. But if you're a music nerd, you can yeah. appreciate whatever, you know, I mean, whether you listen to Mogwai or you listen to fucking Animals as Leaders or something like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, on my end, you know, it, it's just always been something I've been interested in. But like, you know, speaking towards, I guess, like the the marketing of all that stuff. And it's I feel like it, it it's generally music is just generally seeing that resurgence like I was talking about, because bands like, you know, whether it's a post rock band or shoegaze band. And I mean, you guys have vocals over the whole thing like you said there's a big pop influence but it's very instrumentally based oh, yeah, still definitely it absolutely is. Yeah. you get it and it's sick though like dude your drums are spicy enough like you know what spicy i mean bro. <laughs> spicy <laughs> dude. nice yeah. spicy but it's not over it's not really overly cool. spicy boy spicy boy yeah it's not overly done um and it's catchy but it's got I mean, I, now I can tell, like, okay, yeah, you were in Smiley with a knife playing guitar. Like, okay, word. Like, yeah, this is a little more, this is a little more dialed back, but, like, I get it. You know what I mean? For sure. So, I, I, The only reason I ask that question is because I just feel like New Orleans t- takes for granted the amount of, like, kind of levels of music that, or, like, I guess the 
New Orleans audiences. I don't even know what I what I'm what, how I'm really trying to ex- describe it, but I feel like there. I I feel like people take for granted the amount of sort of layers that there are in the city of like different kinds of music happening because I think people think that New Orleans music should maybe be something s- specific. Oh, absolutely. I feel like the layers of it are far, far reaching and that no one really takes it, their time to like, kind of look deep into the into the sort of tunnels of what's really happening. I'm constantly surprised at how many bands and like cliques in New Orleans yeah. I don't even know about. It's and wild. I'm like, the yeah. fuck? Like, <laughs> it's very yeah. clicked up in a way sometimes. Well, yeah, a it is. It certainly is. It certainly is. But I feel like more recently it's less clicky. And it's becoming a little bit more maybe open to everybody. And I'm seeing more cool things and weird bills with different bands and more general, um, I guess, support from everybody. Um, but are, are all you guys like from New Orleans, like born and raised? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Raised. Raised, raised. Raised, dude. Born. born and. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Patty, oh, yeah. Patty moved here when raised. he was like. Two. How old were you? Eight. He was eight. Okay. Okay. I, we grew up here, man. But I mean, he's from the West. He went to high school. He went to high school. If you go to high school in New Orleans, you're from New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and a lot of us um, from where I'm from, we're from like Huntla, which is like watch small people, and you'll know exactly what it is. Um, but I don't know. We from from home and like also from North Shore. There's like a lot of musicians. Yeah. I think there's just nothing going on. So we just See, had to like do shit. I feel like I feel like there's like a huge opportunity that is like waiting to happen where like bands from New Orleans, bands from Homa, bands from North Shore, bands from all these all these places, I I feel like there's an opportunity that's not like that that is there for everyone to sort of connect a little bit further. Right. And that's you cool know? as fuck that y'all have Strange Daisy. Yeah. And you know, we're on the fucking Lantern Light podcast, right? Yeah. You know, whatever. But you know, it's just I mean, it, this wouldn't be possible and neither would your record label be as easy to get off the ground if there wasn't a wealth of fucking awesome artists. Oh, there's tons of awesome here. artists. Here. Yeah. There's so many. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I'm like constantly surprised. But um so yeah, what's uh what do you guys have I guess planned for you know this release? You guys have a show the thirteenth on Saturday. At Bank Street. Correct. With? Matron and Island Days. Cool. It's Island Days, it's, it's their first show. It's Sick. Half of the Fruit Machines. Cool. Yeah. Um, any possible touring plans? Yeah, we, we were talking about taking taking a weekend, three day, you know. A couple of those. Three shows, yeah, do a couple of those, try to sell some records. Yeah, we got a record to old sell. Man so. but, uh, yeah, <laughs> old but, man trip. Old man trip. But like you said, we old, so we don't really tour that much, but... Um, we're not that old, but we still have a little Texas trip. Do a little weekend warrior shit. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Trying to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, trying to go to Florida or something. Gulf Coast tour. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> Hit, yeah, go just go retire, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sell some records. But if anyone wants to take us on tour, hit us up. Yeah, please. We'll consider it. Yeah. Yeah, I think this record's really special. I think you guys should play play that shit right everywhere. On. Appreciate that to the world. We're gonna play a little more. Yeah, we are, and we're and we're gonna play at Bank Street Bar <laughs> really Saturday. soon. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, we're gonna record some new stuff. Hell yeah! Any, uh, where can people find you guys? Staticmass dot com, Bandcamp, Instagram, strangedaisy Strange, dot com. Yeah. Hell yeah! Yep. Any, uh, any shout outs? Shout out to you. Thank yeah, you for yeah, having man. us. Yeah, man. Shout out to you for doing this. Fuck Thanks. yeah! Thanks for letting us. Thanks for giving microphones to us. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, four. Hell yeah, dude. Thanks, Static Masks. Stay tuned for a new song from their sophomore release. Permanent Vacation. Sweet. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. To stay up to date for new podcasts and live recording sessions, follow us on social media at Lantern Light Inc. If you would like to support this podcast, share it to a friend, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can also find us on Patreon if you would like to support in that way. And with that being said, here's the brand new title track from Permanent Vacation by Static Masks. Thanks, guys. Until next time.